Um, well, Roy, look, from Park Hill under 11s to the Premier League, that's been quite a journey, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a very long journey, of course, but uh, it was an emotional night tonight. I think the players have done exceptionally well to deal with the circumstances. You know, a lot was going on yesterday. It wasn't easy for them to come to terms with the information, perhaps, and also, not, not least, the, the very unfortunate injury to Ebrecheze, which also cast a, quite a dampener, if you like, on proceedings. But I thought second half tonight we got ourselves going rather well, and I'm bitterly disappointed that we couldn't at least go away with the draw, because I thought that our second half performance merited that. I know you're not a man who likes too much fuss, so you were probably quite grateful for the game to start, weren't you, in the end? Yes, I was. <laughs> I've got to say, it was... Probably the strangest feeling I've, I've had in a dugout for a long, long time. Um, you know, we're all human. We, you know, we try to make the best of situations and say the right things and do the right things. But, you know, you can't come away from the fact that you're a human being with emotions. And, you know, tonight was always going to be a little bit strange. And I couldn't somehow come away from the fact that the, the game itself seemed to be... Uh, uh, and also ran, if you like, in terms of, you know, the occasion. And as you rightly say, the guard of honour, I, I had no idea that was going to happen. Incredible. And the reception from the fans, both before and after the game, you know, it's something which I think you said in your opening address will, will live in my memory for many, many years. And look, I know that we've already heard from you at the beginning of the show tonight, Roy, where you were clear to say you can't quite bring yourself to say this is the end just yet. Um, so we may well see you back, but as you reflect on, on everything that's happened in the last 45 years, what, in the short term, will you miss the most about being in football? I'll miss what everyone who's passionate about the game and has been lucky enough to either play the game at a high level or coach at a high level, like I've been able to do. I, I think, you know, the, the drug, if you like, gets into your body and you know full well that you're going to have to wean yourself off that drug because... You know, my life has been football and everything has revolved around football. And if I'm going to find myself in a situation where I get up in the morning and there's no training to go to, it's going to be a, an unusual experience and I'll have to come to terms with it. But I, I knew that was going to be the case, so I, I've gone into that with eyes wide open. But I can't deny that it's going to take a little bit of getting used to because it's a, 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 a real break from my usual routine of life. Roy, Joe Cole here. Fantastic career. Congratulations on everything you've done. Um, I know you Thanks. can't bring yourself to, to think of it as the end. Is there a possibility we can see you in maybe a role, maybe supporting a, a younger coach with all your years and years of experience, vast experience around Europe and all of the wonderful jobs that you've done at the different countries and places? Is that something that interests you? Well, thanks, Joe. It's nice to speak to you, of course. Yeah. Uh, it seems a long while since we actually worked together yeah. now. Yeah, uh, The time, time goes fast. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it's not something I've contemplated doing, I must say. Um, I, I think if you're going to do that, you're going to probably have to put as much commitment into that as, a, as I've done, if you like, as manager of the club. So I'm not saying no. I'm not saying that, you know, that could never happen. All I'm saying is it's not something that I've actually contemplated. And... I think most, it's a difficult role, that, that, that role where you actually are there to lend your experience, if you like, to a younger manager. That's a, a very difficult role for the younger manager to accept. So uh, we'll see, but it's, uh, it's not high on my agenda. What, Roy, what about, you know, finishing your career then possibly with a club so close to your heart, your club, you know, a Croydon boy? I mean, that, that is a fairy tale for you. I mean, and what a great job you've done you know, because I know it, it, when you play for your team or you... Well, not you... When I played for my teams that I loved, you take the emotions are a bit more than, than a usual job. How special has this job been for you? Yeah, it's been very special, Joe. There's no question of that. It's been documented many times. It was documented again tonight. I think uh, four years, it's been not an easy ride. You know, you know, keeping Palace in the Premiership is certainly not one of the easier jobs around, but it's been a real privilege to do it, and certainly a privilege to do it, uh, as you rightly say, with the club that I first watched play when I was maybe five or six years of age with my, with my father, and it's quite strange that the circle, which has lasted so long, ends up here now at uh, 
of the club of my boyhood. Hi, Roy. This is uh, Freddy Lundberg. And, uh, Hello, Freddy. Uh, hi. Hey, hey. Hur mår du? Vi är mycket mår du? Still got the Swedish. Um, no, I just want to take the, the opportunity to say thank you for everything you've done for football. And uh, I've been looking up to you for a long time. And maybe me, I wanted to ask you a question. You've been so good and so successful for 45 years. And a lot of probably changed in football during those years. And what has been the key for you? And how would you have been able to, to change and... Uh, how can you been so successful for so many years? It's intriguing. Well, I think one of the things you're going to do if you're going to stay in the game for a long time, you need to live in the present and you need to move with the times and you need to accept the new cultures. You need to accept the, you know, the, the new ideas perhaps that are coming into the game. And certainly your management style will probably certainly change because you're dealing with a different group of players who've got a, a totally different mindset maybe to players that you started off with so many, many years ago. And there's a big temptation when you've been in the game a long time to look back and think everything was easier before, everything was, was better before, that life was easier before. It's not true, of course, and it's a very dangerous thing to do. And I think one of the things I've tried to do is to, to stay in the present, stroke future, and make certain that I try to adjust to the mores of the day and not to sort of fall back, if you like, on some good times in the past. Well, listen, Roy, um, from all of us, huge congratulations on the career that you've had. Um, I know you love football. We also know that your true love, though, is Sheila. For 50 years, she's still alongside you. Eight different countries, all of these different games of football. I think it's probably time you gave her some attention now, right? I think you're right, but I'm not certain she's going to enjoy having me on <laughs> as much as all that. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to pay back as best I can, but I'm a selfish person. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. You've got three days left in training. You've got one more game. Savour them, enjoy them. And from all of us, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Jack. Thanks, thanks, Joe. Freddie, thank you very much. Well, I'm Roy. Oh, what a career. What a guy. And what a lucky club they are to have had him at Crystal Palace.